Chairman Shashi Tharoor, Member of Parliament, Prabhav Thiruvan of the Puram, your city. And I'm delighted to join you all, though sadly virtually, in this online celebration of Christmas organized by the Loyola School. You know, when I went to a Jesuit school in my very young days, Campion School in Bombay, we had three houses named after great Christian Catholic heroes and martyrs. And one of the houses was that name for Ignatius Loyola. Uh, when I, in our school, I belonged to the one named for Francis Xavier, so we were rivals. But I've always had from childhood a great deal of respect for Loyola, for the name, and for the extraordinary education that is now associated with his name, not just in Tiruvannathapuram or in India, but across the world, where Loyola schools and Loyola universities have actually been able to produce upstanding fine young, and, young men and women of great intellectual and moral distinction. Today you're all gathered to mark a very special occasion, Christmas. And I have to tell you that it's very easy for all of us to wish each other a wonderful Christmas. Imagine all the gifts you'll be receiving and giving and exchanging, the joys and comforts associated with Christmas, and perhaps to forget something of the original lessons that Christmas is meant to have taught us all. Now, as you know, I'm not a Christian, but I did go to two Christian schools and a Christian college. I have, I'm proud to say, read the Bible as literature. Uh, I find some of the language of the St. James's version of the Bible, particularly King James version of the Bible, particularly memorable, literary and inspiring. And I have to say that a lot of the lessons, the phrases, and the parables have stayed in my mind. But when one thinks about Christmas, what is the story that we are routinely told to imagine? Christmas, the occasion of the birth of the Son of God. Now when you think about it, if some terribly important personage in our constituency, in our district, in our city, were to be arranging the birth of his heir, what kind of arrangements do you think he might make? An important personality would arrange perhaps the best hospital. If indeed he was from out of town or his bride had to go somewhere else, he'd organize the fanciest five-star hotel accommodations for her. But what does the Son of God emerge into? His parents are refugees. They are hurtling from place to place. They end up unable to find any place to stay and end up in an animal's manger. And there, amidst the animals, on a bed of hay, the Son of God is born. Surely it's not that God couldn't have arranged more comfortable surroundings for His Son to be born in. Surely the larger story of Christmas is a story that should remind us all, amidst a season of joy and giving, that there are many who don't experience joy and need our giving. That just as Mary, Joseph, and eventually Jesus found themselves homeless, wandering, and born in terribly deprived and straitened circumstances amid animals or in a place where animals would normally stay. The story reminds us all to identify with those who have nothing not even a roof over their heads, reminds us that it is deprivation that the Son of God was born amid in order to bring hope and succor and light to the world. So whether all of you are believing Christians or not, it's a story that applies to all of us. And I tell this story simply as, if you like, a simple lesson that the Christmas tale has taught me, which is that just as none of us truly lives in an island, just as each of us is born into a society, into circumstances, high or low, affluent or poor, simple or complicated, so too around us are human beings of whose existence and whose difficulties we must never be unaware. Let us remember at this time of Christmas 
that great lesson from the story of Christmas. Let us remember those who have so little and let us remember that just as Jesus was born into the world to bring succor to them, so all of us in our own lives have the capacity to make a difference to the lives of the unfortunates around us. It can be through charity if we can afford it, but no one expects you to give more than you can afford. It can instead be through acts of kindness, acts of simple generosity, acts of welcome, acts essentially of concern for those who have less and who are in need. Each of us can do that and let that be perhaps my simple message to all of you. Each of us has within us the gift of giving. Give only what you have, what you can afford, what you can spare. But none of us can truly say that he or she cannot afford a kind word, a few minutes of our time and the extension of our heart to those who can benefit from it. Let me wish all of you a wonderful Christmas and a very happy new year. Janet.